Hello, and welcome everybody to tonight's celebration. I'm Troy Matthews, and I'm going to be your host tonight for the Laura Russo Illuminary Alumni Awards Ceremony. Before we begin, uh, we would like to acknowledge that Portland, Oregon lies within the traditional homelands of Multnomah, Oregon City Tumwater, the Wattalada, the Clackamas Chinooks, and the Tualatin or Kalapuya people who were relocated to the Grand Ronde Reservation under the Willamette Valley Treaty of 1855. Today, these tribes are part of the Confederate tribes of Grand Ronde. The Grand Ronde people continue to maintain a connection with their ancestral homelands and maintain their traditional cultural practices. We'd also like to acknowledge that the land where PNC is located rests on the traditional village sites of Multnomah, uh, Kathlamet, Clackamas, Tualatin, the Kalapuya, Malala, Bands of the Chinook, and many other tribes who made their homes along the Columbia River. We'd also like to acknowledge the systemic policies of genocide, relocation, assimilation that still impact many indigenous and Native American families today. As settlers and guests on these lands, we respect the work that Native nations, leaders, families have done and are currently doing. We also make ongoing efforts to center indigenous knowledge, creativity, resilience, and resili or resistance within our lives and our practices here. On behalf of the members of the Alumni Council and the Alumni Recognition Committee, I would like to thank you all for coming out and paying tribute to four of our outstanding alumni this evening. Before we start, I thought we would start out with some jokes. First joke, what does an artist drink when they are pondering their next piece of art? Subtlety. Uh, second joke and last joke, who is the classical painter who is beloved by most bodybuilders? Thomas Gaines, brah! All right, enough of the jokes. As you can tell, they're questionable at best. And maybe I should probably do in sketch comedy instead of stand up. Uh, when writing this speech, I got a book to help me and it was on how to be a sketch artist. I read the first chapter and I've already started drawing large crowds. Uh, now let me take a little moment to talk about myself for a moment. My parents were both famous artists. I called them Moma and Dada. Uh, they're the ones that inspired me to want to become an abstract artist. And because of that, I'm not going to tell you or go into much details about that. I applied for several art schools and got into them, but I got rejected when I got there because I was using the wrong pencil. I guess it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> I finished my degree at PNCA in 2006 with a focus on painting and curation. After graduation, I found myself teaching middle school uh, art in Wilsonville at Insa R. Wood Middle School. Um, and now I'm here. Uh, we've been exploring a lot about stencils in our classroom and I might have gone over my budget and bought way too many. So many that I might have an excessive stencil crisis going on. Just this morning, we had a sketch comedy or sketch competition with my students uh, for my eighth graders and it got really heated because they're all very competitive and I had to end it early. It was a good thing too, because it ended in a draw. Uh, this week, the last past two days, uh, my sixth graders have been drawing ellipses and circles, just getting practice on making things that have curves to it. And today I overheard another student talking to another student, and they said that this lesson is completely pointless. All right, that's enough about me and my bad jokes. It is time to start our celebration. Uh, even though we're celebrating tonight's ceremony digitally, and I do want to apologize in advance for any technical difficulties or any errors, or if I pronounce any names incorrectly, um, please bear with us. This evening is going to be special uh, for us to acknowledge these four outstanding and amazing artists as recipients of the Laura Russo Luminary Award tonight. So please join us as we take this exceptional journey honoring these award winners, uh, Anthony Hudson, Mary Ellen McFadden, Lucinda Parker, Parker and R.V. Smith. 
Over the last year, we have experienced a global pandemic, civil unrest, forest fires, natural disasters, political hotbeds, and searched for social justice. There have been many challenges and changes across the world, which has called for more critical thinking, social change, and voices of the many to focus on equality and just causes. These elements are considered to be core principles of our community here at PNCA. We stand at the forefront of implementing change and watch as much of the world begins to follow suit. We would like to thank each one of you for the work you do in your own practices each day to make the world a more inclusive place. So thank you. As I mentioned before tonight, we will be honoring four outstanding artists who have been selected as alumni who have become examples of excellence and have made an impact on our community. But before we hear from our awardees, I would like to recognize the president of Willamette University, President Steve Thorson, who is here with us tonight. Please welcome to our community, President Thorson. I would also like to introduce PNCA's interim president, David Ellis, who will be sharing a few thoughts with us. So please give a big welcome to Mr. David Ellis. Thanks, Troy. <clears throat> I hope you can hear me out there. I am so honored to be here today uh, to celebrate Anthony, Ellen, Lucinda, and Arvi and your accomplishments uh, that the Alumni Recognition Committee has uh, voted for you. Uh, I can't imagine uh, more worthy recipients. PNCA is very proud of you. I wanna thank the Alumni Recognition Committee Stacy Amaya, Linda Hutchins, Troy Matthews, Tamara English, Gina Edelman, Paige Lambert, Gabriella, and of course, Faith Emerson and Lauren Creaney for your hard work. I know that these were tough choices, but you came up with some really, really good uh, awardees. Thanks for being here, President Thorsett, Steve. I know you're out there somewhere. Uh, I know that our alumni and our college are going to be in very good hands. Uh, and that's coming very soon. As many of you know, uh, PNCA is poised to merge with another terrific institution on June 30th of this year, uh, Willamette University. And President Thorsett, of course, is the president at Willamette. The, I think it's fitting that this year was chosen to reinvigorate uh, the Laura Russo Luminary Awards uh, and recognize these artists from PNCA uh, who, and from the museum school, I might add, as we uh, pause briefly before this merger. Like our recipients today, who combined bring so many talents in different disciplines to the fair four, this merger will add to the palette we offer our students to broaden their education, their understanding, and consequently their reach. We're on the eve of an educational combination that will change both institutions. You know, on July 1st, one third of the undergraduate students at Willamette University will be art students. And these students will now have at their fingertips new content, law, business, business, music, theater, expanded digital and computer uh, programming tools to help inform and make possible uh, their lives of creative practice. All of this expanded, uh, vastly expanded programming and content will give a, a boost to their education. And at the same time, our terrific faculty, staff and students and our curriculum will expand the creative uh, horizons for Willamette students. As you can tell, we're really excited about this. It's going to be really great. Uh, it will ensure uh, Willamette University and PNCA a very bright future in Salem, in Portland, in the region and nationally. I am most honored to be here and to be the interim president for this year of change, for momentous change. And I really, really am happy to be here 
to celebrate you, Ellen, RV, Lucinda, and Anthony. You bring your college pride. Thank you. Thank you, David, so much for those wonderful words. Um, we really appreciate you taking the helm and guiding us to where we need to go. Uh, tonight, the Laura Russo Luminary Award is one of the most prestigious awards that PNCA awards. That's a lot of times I said award. Uh, the first time it was given out was in 2011 to Laura Russo, who graduated from PNCA in 1975. It was awarded to her for her outstanding contributions to the Portland art scene. The next time it was awarded was in 2013 to George Johansson, who graduated PNCA in 1950. It was awarded to him for his long life commitment to the arts and nurturing students' creative development. For several years, the award has not been given out. A year and a half ago, PNCA's Alumni Council embarked on a new series, a search for after we realized that there were so many fantastic alumni we have yet to recognize. Tonight, we'll be showcasing four worthy recipients for this honor, Anthony Hudson, Mary Ellen McFadden, Lucinda Parker, and Arby Smith. The Laura Russo Illuminary Alumni Award is awarded to alumni who have demonstrated excellent impact, innovation, and integrity in their lives, works, and creative practice, and aims to celebrate the broad spectrum of traditional and non-traditional paths to alumni excellence. With a bit more of the history of the award, here is Faith Emerson and Dylan Lawrence, Laura Russo's son, to talk more about Laura Russo, the award, the Russo Lee Gallery, and the exhibit of our award winner's work at the gallery right now. Please join me while we take a look. Welcome and good evening from the Russo Lee Gallery. Originally the Laura Russo Gallery, the gallery was founded in 1986 by Laura Russo. My name is Faith Emerson and I'm the Alumni Relations Coordinator at PNCA. And I'm standing in the exhibition space that presents the work of our four recipients tonight in the gallery. The show is on through the month of June. The Laura Russo Luminary Alumni Award was made in honor of PNCA's alum, Laura Russo, for her incredible contributions in the development of the Portland arts community. Initially working for Arlene Schnitzer and the Pioneering Fountain Gallery, Laura went on to found her own gallery where she showcased and advocated for some of the most notable artists in the Northwest, including her aunt and uncle, Michael Russo and Sally Haley, as well as one of our recipients tonight, Lucinda Parker. She co-established the First Thursday Group, which became the Portland Art Dealers Association, and excluding COVID, has been creating community outreach now for over 30 years. She shared her knowledge and keen aesthetic with others, and she believed and expected excellence from herself and those around her. And she was a great supporter of many arts organizations, including PNCA. Laura Russo received the prestigious Governor Arts Award in 2010 and was recognized posthumously in 2011 as the first recipient of the Laura Russo Distinguished Alumni Award. We've come here today to talk with Dylan Lawrence, Laura's son, and whose history and knowledge of Laura the Portland art scene and PNCA is extensive. Let's meet up with Dylan now to talk about some of his insights and recollections of his mom. You have a long history in the Portland art scene. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what it was like with your mom in those early days. My parents who had met in art school uh, divorced when I was seven. And my mother in the early seventies, she had to take whatever jobs were available. And she always put food on the table for me and my sister. Uh, we always had lovely times, and then we would go and participate and be, and we were just a part of this uh, amazing community of artists that were all very accomplished, intelligent people. As the years went on, Mother was very trepidatious about opening the gallery, and I can remember telling her, you know, Mom, you got all these artists that are backing you. I don't think she ever in the early years envisioned that she would own one of the premier galleries in the Pacific Northwest and run it. She did that because of uh, her passion uh, for a survival, I suppose, 
but B, uh, uh, more importantly, the, this incredible uh, community of artists that she moved to the Pacific Northwest when she was 17 to be around and pursue an art career on her own. What kind of impact did she make um, within the art community? When you look at the, kind of the meta picture of Laura Russo, uh, for all of her directness and uh, kind of arched comments that she would sometimes make for people. It always came from a place in her heart of helping people be their best and make and find beauty in their lives. I've had so many people come up to me over the last 11 years since she died who would say, you know, your mother knew I was never going to buy art, but she would take her time. She would talk to me about it. She would show me everything. And to my mind, the three pillars really were to maintain the gallery as for her employees to maintain the gallery for the artists so that they could continue to sell and make art as a gallerist i think help support them in their path and their journey uh, and then the third thing that was very important to her was uh, a public space for members of the public to come in and be able to peruse art the collectors to develop their interest and their happens for uh, what they want. It really is her underlying commitment to the entire art community to be supportive, be their best, and uh, make and find beauty. That's such a rich heritage that she's left us. How would you say this particular luminary award reflects your mother's philosophies or that vision she had? Well, I think it's uh, a wonderful honor to have this award in her name. I think the two pillars that she would most want uh, reflected in the idea of a Laura Russo Illuminary Award would be the idea that we in Portland support each other in a community of artists, make and find beauty in an excellent way and struggle with that. Because I think life for everyone, whether you're an artist or not, is often a struggle. You know, the Portland art community is so different than it was back in the 70s. It's so much larger. And I hope that that spirit of support and cooperation amongst artists for each other and and educating the public and and growing the art scene even further continues. Thank you, Faith and Dylan, for all that insight into the wonderful memories and the pictures of Portland's history. Now it is time that we've all been waiting for. It is time to celebrate and learn more about our award winners. So tonight we'll be hearing from our alum uh, and alumni chair of the Alumni Recognition, Recognition Committee, Stacy Anai, who graduated from PNCA in 2005. She will be introducing each of our recipients and a little bit about their work. First off, we have Anthony Hudson, AKA Oregon's premier drag clown, Carla Rossi, who graduated from PNCA in 2013 with a focus on intermedia. Please, let's enjoy. Anthony Hudson is a Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde multidisciplinary artist, writer, and filmmaker, and is also known as Portland's premier drag clown, Carla Rossi. Anthony graduated from PNCA in 2013 with a major in intermedia. In 2018, Anthony was named a National Artist Fellow from the Native Arts and Cultures Foundation and a Western Arts Alliance Native Launchpad Artist. In 2019, Anthony became an Oregon Arts Commission Fellow, and in 2021, Anthony received a First People's Fund Fellow, as well as project support and fellowships from the National Endowment for the Arts. Together, Anthony and Carla host and program Queer Horror, the only ongoing LGBTQ plus horror film and performance series in the country at Portland's historic Hollywood Theater. Anthony has worked with USA Artists International, the Oregon Community Foundation, RAP, yeah, the Portland Art Museum, and so much more. 
Anthony's performances have been featured at the Portland and Seattle Art Museums, Artist Repertory Theater, Portland Center Stage, New York Theater Workshops, and in international venues. We congratulate Anthony today for becoming a Laura Russo Luminary Alumni Award recipient. I'm Anthony Hudson. I'm also sometimes better known as Carla Rossi, who is a pack of lies. And I graduated from PNCA in 2013 with its focus in intermedia. Welcome to queer. Kid, um, my mom would always tell me about the time that she spent in art school. And I drew my whole childhood. Drawing was something that I was so interested in. And actually I started at PNCA as an illustrator. I didn't do drag until like midway through my, my time at PNCA. And even then I was afraid to bring it into PNCA, but it was my professors that were saying, hey, so you're showing up late for class with clown makeup still covering your face. What's going on? Why, don't, why aren't you doing that here if you care about it so much? Oh, that's so cool. I think the thing that people connect with about Carla is the fact that she is just such a fool. Um, she is such a clown. She's an attempt to lampoon the things I see wrong in the world and the problems I see functioning or, or not functioning. But simultaneously, um, she's also myself. She's me at my most awful and my most evolved so, <laughs> somehow at the same time. Receiving the Laura Russo Luminary Alumni Award is an honor. It's a massive honor to me. It feels like I really am part of PNCA and it feels like I really uh, made a mark on a place that had a huge impact for me. But I think even more so when I, when I think about this honor, I'm looking at the people that I'm honored alongside and these individuals who, to me, are monoliths. So we have Ellen McFadden and Lucinda Parker and R.B. Smith, and that I get to say I'm part of a group with these incredible, incredible people and artists and human beings. Um, it just really blows me away, especially, especially as someone who still sees themselves as a little weird kid from a small town who is best known for dressing up like an angry white lady from Lake Oswego. Uh, that's massive. <laughs> ah, that is so wonderful. Uh, Anthony, would you be so kind to turn on your camera and unmute yourself? Well, hello, hello. Hello, how are you doing tonight? I'm ecstatic, how are you? <laughs> I'm just honored to be here uh, celebrating you and all these other wonderful people. You've been busy. Yes, I've been very busy on my couch reading books for the last year and doing nothing else. <laughs> That's not true. I heard you were raising money for artists not too long ago. Do you want to tell us about that? Did I raise money for artists? Oh, yes, I did. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, my brain. I just forget everything. Um, yeah, I, we just ran a little fundraiser for Risk Reward, which is a wonderful theater group that I work with here in Portland. I'm on the board of. And we put together a Zoom telethon for, uh, I did it as Carla Rossi and my best friend Pepper Pepper joined. And we had a sham telethon that actually was a real telethon but of a uh, drag self-help Zoom gone wrong. And we raised some funding for risk reward artists and it was super fun. We were able to watch it from the comfort zone our home. And I thought it was a brilliant way of taking on fundraising in a pandemic. Oh, thank you for watching. It was, it was a joy just to get to be very weird with some close friends for an hour. <laughs> it's always the case, right? Yeah. Um, You've also been to Broadway. You had a off Broadway performance there not too long ago. Yes, yeah, that was really weird. I I had an off Broadway premiere, my off off Broadway premiere at uh, at um, the New York Theater Workshop in La Mama um, in January. My solo show, Looking for Tiger Lily, streamed through there um, through the Reflections of Native Voices Festival that Safe Harbors New York City does, and that that was just wild to me. And it was actually my ideal gig because it was like an, my off-Broadway debut and it was a video that I had done like at TBA for PICA and I got to just lay on the couch while it existed in the internet. <laughs> so that was, that was the best kind of show. <laughs> so how is life treating you during this pandemic? You were saying you're on the couch and you're just reading books. Are you planning anything big in the future? Are there things that we need to look out for you to celebrate you and your work in the future? 
Uh, well, I would appreciate any attention at all times, but um, yeah, I, I've just been writing a lot in addition to reading. I, I find that reading helps me write better, um, and that's a whole other extension of my art practice. Um, and I'm working on a new piece. I'm working on a new show that I'm actually touring to Stanford, uh, uh, hopefully this fall, assuming things go well. And then next year in TBA, I'm premiering Clown Down 2, Clown Out of Water, where, um, you know, I did the first Clown Down at PNCA. And in that show, Carla gets crushed by a cabinet that has fallen on her, a David Eckert cabinet. And in Clown Down 2, she is now trapped on a rock in the middle of the ocean. Um, and this is just the, my idea of where I want to take all of my work from now on is let's put a clown and let's just trap her in horrible scenarios and then watch me laugh. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I will definitely put that on my calendar. Um, I do have a question. As being one of the youngest award winners, how is this impacting you and your career as you think of yourself as an artist and as you go forward? It, it just feels so massive. Like this is this is so cool. And this this is like, I think the first physical award that I think I've ever received. I've received honors and that's, that means so much to me, but this is the first physical award. So I get to put it on my mantle and I'm very excited to be able to put this on my mantle. Um, but just, just knowing that I'm, that I'm recognized and, and like I said in the video with this incredible group of individuals, I really, I really feel like, like I am, I mean, I always feel like the odd duck, but I just really can't believe that I get to be part of this specific group um, of just of just legends that I've looked up to for a while. So, uh, yeah, it, it 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 gives me that kind of extra zhuzh that I think I need, especially after this year. So it really means a lot. Well, you deserve it, and we can't wait to see what you do in the future. We're gonna have more time to talk with you in a little bit, but we're gonna continue on with the award presentation now. Thank you, Anthony, so much for your kind words and wonderful insight into your practice. Thank you, Troy, and thank you, everyone. <laughs> Our next award winner is er uh, Mary Ellen McFadden, who graduated from PNCA in 1940, when it was still called the Museum Art School. Please enjoy this. Ellen McFadden was born in 1928 in Portland, Oregon, and has had a lifelong commitment to art and design, both as an instructor and freelance graphic designer in the Northwest and Iowa. She attended the Museum Art School, now Pacific Northwest College of Art, and took classes with Doug Lynch and Lloyd Reynolds. At the same time, she also set up a cubbyhole office in downtown Portland, where she did pre-press mechanicals for other designers and freelance calligraphy. Influenced in the early 1960s by constructivist and new graphic design movements in Europe, she and her husband, Erwin McFadden, assimilated these new styles into their own design and art practices. Ellen taught technical design and calligraphy at colleges in Washington, as well as in Iowa for over 20 years, and spent 15 years developing and supervising a work-study information design program until she retired. It was then that she began her revered painting career. At 93, Ellen continues to work on paintings that incorporate pattern and vibrant color, their titles alluding to the Northwest geography and native tribes that are so ingrained in her personal history. In addition to multiple exhibitions at Ampersand Gallery, McFadden's paintings have been featured in solo presentations at Wyden and Kennedy, and her work was included in the 2016 Portland Biennial. We congratulate Ellen as a recipient of the Laura Russo Luminary Alumni Award. Thank you so much, Ellen, uh, Mary Ellen. Uh, if you would turn on your camera right now, we would love to hear from you. How are you doing this evening? Uh, let's see, how are you? How am I doing? <laughs> At lovely two, I think I'm doing fine <laughs> with, with your help. <laughs> well, you are sounding great and you got some wonderful work behind you. You're still creating and making, is that correct? Well, uh, I, I struggle on. We all struggle on. <laughs> I, awesome. I just have something to say, and, and Ampersand Gallery was right there to help me say it. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. I've heard that you are quite the young icon with young artists and designers. They all look up to you. Well, yes, more or less. <laughs> not not as quite as much as I had in the past. <laughs> I still hear you that you're a force to reckon with. Yeah. And that 
you set the standard of, of design and principles with color and line. And I think it's just fantastic. Well, that's just by your, the way I, have, I see things. And, and I just go my own little way. <laughs> Well, thank you for setting the example. Uh, what are you currently working on in your practice? What, what are you currently working on in your practice? What am I working on now? Yeah. Well, I, it isn't work so much a struggle at times, but, uh, uh, I, well, I'm never quite sure what I'm doing until I start working. Uh, well, I seem that seems to be the antithesis of what it is to be an artist. Struggle and not know what you're doing. Let's see what he's saying. Um, I'm, I'm so deaf. Uh, he said that seems to be typical of, of making art, the, yes. the difficulties. Yeah. Yes, right. It's yeah. very, very typical of my... Uh, of being an artist, sometimes it's a challenge. Oh, yes. <laughs> There's a huge question there when you start to work. <laughs> You know, which way are you going? What are you doing? What are you resolving? I just think the I love that the the war was so fantastic, and it helps to generate my enthusiasm on for the future. I appreciate well, that. You have been an inspiration to a lot of us at PNCA, and so thank you from all of us for. Uh, uh, continuing that struggle in the studio to uh, make the best work you can that fulfills so I, I watch what Stan used to say, and it's so good. And I think, well, he, the, the young ones are speaking for us, so older ones. <laughs> That's nice. Well, Mary Ellen, thank you so much for being with us. We'll have more with you in a little bit. We're going to continue on. Uh, thank you so much for your amazing words there. Our next recipient is Lucinda Parker, who graduated from PNCA in 1966 with a joint major uh, with Reed College. Let's please watch this video. I think they're figuring it out right now. Please bear with us if we are having some technical difficulties. I'm sure I can find some bad jokes. Oh, we missed the video for Ellen. Okay, we might be going back, I hear. I have this little headpiece. So we'll see what's going on. They're giving me instructions. The name is Mary Ellen. Um, I have no major. Everything was uh, mixed. It was not as it is today. The curriculum was uh, according to the school's plan. I remember in 1949, I guess. I had been taking classes from the time I was a child in 1930s, late 30s, and then through World War II period. I was taking part-time adult classes, and then it became, when I graduated from high school, full time. I became very interested in what was going on in European design, and how that related to local work through my education at Pena, where the course was in museum school. Living in the Northwest is my home and my family's home for several generations. And uh, I felt that it's related to the world that was very important. My words of wisdom to young people are explore and travel and see what's going on in the world. That probably helped me more than anything to see what's out there. Receiving the award means this very much to me because uh, it shows uh, how much I have covered it. it helps me to relate to a certain finished product. And that's uh, a lifetime. <laughs> 
I do apologize for that. That was my fault. Uh, there was the video for Mary Ellen McFadden. And I do agree with her. You need to travel as much as possible. So hopefully you're all vaccinated and you can get out there and travel this summer. And if not, next year. Uh, definitely influences my practice, much like Mary Ellen. Now we can continue with Lucinda Parker. And as I was saying earlier, uh, Lucinda Parker graduated from PNCA and uh, Reed College in 1966. And here is Lucinda Parker's video. Among the most admired painters in the Northwest, Lucinda Parker has forged an impressive career that includes ambitious public projects in Oregon, Washington, and California. Originally from Boston, Parker received a BA jointly from Reed College and the Museum Art School, now Pacific Northwest College of Art, and an MFA from Pratt Institute. Parker taught composition, drawing, and painting at PNCA from 1972 until she retired in 2006. Represented by Russo Lee Gallery in Portland and Linda Hodges Gallery in Seattle, Parker's works are in collections throughout the Northwest. Major public collections include the Howie Ford Museum of Art at Willamette University, the Portland Art Museum, and the Seattle Art Museum. Public commissions can be found at the Oregon Convention Center, Portland City Hall, and the Federal Courthouse in Bakersfield, California, among others. The Portland Art Museum honored Parker with a mid-career retrospective in 1995. The Boise Art Museum presented a one-person exhibition of her work in 2002. And in 2019, the Howie Ford Museum mounted a 50 plus year retrospective of her impressive career. Our congratulations go out to Lucinda as a recipient of the Laura Russo Luminary Alumni Award. Lucinda Parker, would you please turn on your camera and unmute yourself? How are you doing this evening? Very well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm very pleased to be part of this group of people. It is an amazing group of people, and you're one of them. Uh, how is your practice going lately? Uh, I'm really busy. Well, that's great. What, what things do we get to look forward to? you have anything coming up? Uh, yeah, I'm working on a big project for the Washington State Arts Commission uh, for um, Tumwater. Uh, and Tumwater is a little town just south of uh, Olympia. And Tumwater is the Chinook jargon for waterfall. And this is a big building that's filled with um, laboratories. And people are not invited to come in. However, they are getting somebody to make paintings. That's me. <laughs> we'll see what comes out. They haven't even broken ground yet. So I don't know what I'm exactly going to do. But it's a big project. That is, it sounds like a huge project and very interesting. Yeah, it is. It is. Are, are you painting big again? Well, I think the biggest painting I ever made was um, the one that's in, the one that's in the convention center is truly the biggest one, which is 14 by 44 feet. But the one that's in um, Longview, Washington is 10 by 40 feet and it's one piece of canvas. I don't know how we did it. It was just quite remarkable. And uh, a couple of the people uh, like Linda Hutchins helped me with it. And uh, I had a, a big bunch of people helping me. It was, it was very exciting. That's fantastic. It sounds like you have uh, a, a large space to work in to make these things happen. At least that's what I've seen, uh, especially when I've seen your shows. I've always been impressed by the scale and, and a lot of your brush strokes. And I think you even use a scraping technique oh, yeah. in your yeah. artwork. I wow. use a spatula, uh, the kind of spatula that the mud the mud guys use when they're when they're putting the 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 filling in between pieces of sheetrock the sheetrock mudder. So it's basically it's about ten inches wide and it, and I use it like a paintbrush. And and Tom Fox once said a very smart thing. He says if you make a big thing, you make a big work. You should make it with big tools. <laughs> big tools help a lot. But um, I like to work small too. I like, I like all kinds of work. And I, also, I would like to say something about Laura Russo because this is in honor of Laura Russo and she and I, uh, she started uh, the museum art school in 60 and I started in 62. 
And we are the same age, actually, or we would be the same age if she was still alive. And I want to tell you that when Arlene decided to close the gallery, we all looked at Laura and Laura said, well, maybe I can do this. And she, she borrowed uh, some $10,000 from 10 people. And within a, a year and a half, she had paid it back. And it was a big risk for her. She didn't have a big pocket. She didn't, she didn't have the kind of backing, of course, that Arlene had. But on the other hand, Arlene was always there in the background making sure that people came in. And you know, Arlene knew where all the walls were, but Laura had a lot of courage when she, when she took it over. It was, it was a big deal for her. It was a, it was a risk, but it was worth it. And, and I have always admired, I'd always admired her for it. It is a big risk and, you know, it's not one that you take lightly and obviously she put a lot of hard work and effort into it and all of her wonderful artists, you know, supported the, her with creating amazing things like you did. Well, the other thing you have to remember about running a gallery is it's a place for everybody to go. You don't pay money to go in there. You don't pay money for admission and you can look and, you know, you can, you can look and think and, it's, it's free. I mean, somebody has to buy something sometimes, but the fact is it's free for you to go in there and people forget that. They forget that. Well, thank you so much for Lucinda. We're gonna watch your video uh, that they did of you and then we'll have you back on a little bit more to talk with some of our guests this evening. Lucinda Parker. And um, also known as Cindy McCarthy, but Lucinda Parker. And I graduated from uh, Museum Art School uh, in 1966. And I majored in painting and I minored in printmaking. I was born in Boston Lying Inn in 1942. And my mother was a very um, cheerfully permissive person. She allowed me to mix up poster paint with water and mix up red and blue and yellow and white and all these colors. And then uh, it came time for me to go away to school and my mother wanted me to go to Smith. And I said, forget that, I'm going to read. And the reason I picked read was I read in a catalog that I could do a combined program with the museum and art school. What drew me to the art school was three hours of studio work in the morning and three hours of studio work in the afternoon. That's what drew me to the art school. I was totally happy. I felt like I'd gone to heaven. I just remember these life drawing classes because, you know, in those days, first of all, you weren't supposed to be looking at nude bodies. And second of all, you weren't supposed to be drawing them, but we did. And, it, and that's what I wanted to do. And, and the other thing is, I always felt, and I still feel this way, that I'm part of a sliding sandwich, which consists of myself and my colleagues, my own age, my teachers, and my students. And these are sliding forms that slide by each other. Receiving the Laura Russo Luminary Alumni Award is important because uh, a luminary award means something that is sticking up and catching the light from somewhere else, or it means somebody who's actually emitting light. So I don't know which kind of luminary we're talking about here, but I like it. <laughs> oh, I apologize for jumping out of order. Um, so I appreciate all of you bearing with me as I am the technical difficulty this evening. Um, we are going to move on now to our next and final award winner, which is R.V. Smith. R.V. Smith graduated from PNCA in 1986 with a focus on painting. Please enjoy this about R.V.'s practice. It looks like we are fixing the sound issue right now. Um, hopefully it will be up and running in a moment. 
Thank you again so much for your patience as we are working this all out at PNCA's first and possibly last digital award show. Might be starting right now, but we still can't hear sound. So they're trying again. Um, funny stories, I think I might have some. Uh, well, we wait. Uh, Arby Smith spent his childhood in rural Texas and South Central Los Angeles. He received his BFA in painting from PNCA in 1986 and his MFA from the Hochberger School of Painting at Maryland Institute College of Art in 1992. Smith also studied at the Studio Arts Center International and attended Il Basante International School of Printmaking in Florence, Italy, while his work continues to be informed by his travels to West Africa. Arby taught at the Maryland Institute College of Art, University of Oregon, Oregon College of Arts and Crafts, and PNCA. After teaching painting for 25 years, Smith retired in 2014 with the title of Faculty Emeritus, and in 2018 was awarded an honorary PhD of art from PNCA. He has exhibited extensively, both regionally and nationally, and has work in many American collections, including Memphis Brooks Museum of Art, Delaware Museum of Art, University of Maryland, the Lauren Rogers Museum of Art in Mississippi, and the Reginald F. Lewis Museum in Baltimore, Maryland. In 2017, he received the Governor's Award for the Art for Lifetime Achievement, and in 2020, the Joan Mitchell Sculpture and Painters Award. Next year, Arby's work will be exhibited in a retrospective collection at Cali Ford Museum of Art at Willamette University and will be represented in the 2022 Venice Biennale. We congratulate RV as a recipient of the Laura Russo Luminary Alumni Award. My name is RV Smith, and I graduated from Pacific Northwest College of Art in 1986. Um, and I majored in painting and printmaking. I grew up in the rural South uh, with my great grandmother, my grandmother and grandfather. Um, my great grandmother, who was born a slave, I came to Portland and every day uh, on the way to my social service job, I would pass this art school. And I said, one day I'm going to go to that art school. I had gone to a talk at the Pacific Northwest College of Art uh, just to see what the art school was about. And there was this, this professor who was with artists on stage in the auditorium by the name of Paul Messel. This artist is painting with both hands, painting a portrait with both hands and lecturing. I said, I want to know what he knows. I always wanted to belong to an artist community, uh, work with other artists, uh, and pass on the information that I had that I always wanted to know and didn't know how to get. We're receiving the Laura Rousseau Luminary Award for PNCA alumni uh, is, is quite an honor. It cements my participation, my place in the alumni community of Pacific Northwest College of Art. Which is, which is an incredible honor. Looking back, as I said, some of my professors and those people before me that um, have always kind of been my heroes. RV, would you like to please uh, turn on your camera and unmute yourself there? Okay. Welcome, uh, congratulations. How are you doing tonight? I'm fine, how are you? <laughs> Doing great, thank you. Um, I heard, and it possibly might be a mishearing, but I heard that you might possibly be the first African-American to graduate from PNCA, is that true? I'm the first African-American, according to the registrar, to graduate from the institution of PNCA. That goes all the way back the 100 year uh, the over 100 year history of, of the institution. And I was the first African American to, uh, to graduate in 1980. Oh, that, 
that is a, a big milestone for our school. And it opened up a lot of doors for BIPOC people like myself to come in and graduate as well. So thank you for leading the way. You're welcome. Uh, I'm, uh, how does that go? I'm, I'm my grandparents' dream. Uh, <laughs> As, as my bio says, my great-grandmother was a slave. So to um, be awarded uh, Professor Emeritus and, and uh, an honorary um, uh, PhD is, is just quite amazing. I wish you were around to see it. I was actually there uh, in 2017 to see your award. And it was awesome to see that governor's recognition of your practice. So. Uh, I've been catching all your highlights. Okay, I've got one other. I'm oh. probably, probably the only African-American to do two commencement uh, talks at PNCA. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Arby, is there anything? Oh, sorry, I interrupted. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what did you say? Oh, I said I, I interrupted, I apologize. Oh. You were about to say something. Oh, uh, just that. Uh, I'm uh, being a part of Pacific Northwest College of Art in itself is an honor, but I always wanted to be an artist. And uh, the first time I attempted to go to art school was way back when, and this this was, you know, this was Jim Crow times. And, and I went to this art school and they told me they didn't need my kind there. So I kind of gave up the dream for quite a few years until uh, until Pacific Northwest College for Art. Uh, Arvi, you have some big things coming up. Could you tell us about that so we can put it on our radar? Okay, I have a show coming up at the Halle Ford, a retrospective uh, that will be in 23, 22. 22. And I have another one in 22. Uh, I'll be represented by Gallery Matisse, uh, which is located in Baltimore in the uh, Venice Biennale in 21, 22. Well, there I am. I need to book my trips to Venice right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. We, uh, through, uh, through Garden Gilkey, um, I received a small grant to, to travel and study in, in Italy. And my wife and I were there for a year. Uh, studying painting and printmaking, um, and that, that was quite an experience. My Italian. And I'm very jealous of. It is a very great experience to be over there. Um, Arby, thank you so much. I'm going to ask you to keep your camera on, and I'm also going to invite Mary Ellen McFadden, Anthony Hudson, and Lucinda Parker to turn on your cameras right now. Um, at this time, we are going to celebrate you. And so I'm gonna ask the people at home, our audience, to also join us. We're gonna open up the chat for you to type in any message of congratulations to these wonderful people. If you would like to talk with any of these people, you can click the raise your hand button at the bottom. It's a little hand icon like this. And then we will call on whoever in the audience has their hand up. And then you can ask a question or pay a compliment to of these amazing artists. So uh, let's see what we got. Our first person, I see a hand raising, but uh, George Johansson, a former alumni winner of this award. Please, please unmute yourself, George, and take it away. <laughs> Did I do it right? <laughs> You did. Well, that was uh, that was great, and it was really wonderful to see uh, a synopsis of, of all of your work. Uh, boy, that's good, good stuff, really good. And and I'm struck by how it how it reflects on back on the school and really shows uh, what you got out of the school. But also, uh, also uh, is a tribute to what you've done carrying on. You know, uh, I mean, what you're adding to the community and to the the art life of the community is just just terrific. So they reflect back and forth on each other, I think. And um, Ellen, Mary Ellen, and I were were. <laughs> 
classmates back in uh, the late 40s at the, uh, at the school when it had a wooden floor and, and six little studios with no basement, no upper floor. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, that was actually, actually we'll great. And George, if you want. It's really wonderful to see you still working. Mary Ellen, and, and and the work looks great. We'll see. He said that, it's nice I didn't, to see that you're still I, working. This transition. He said it's nice to see that you're still working. Yeah, yeah, right. That's that's the important thing. And Anthony, yeah, I, it is. Yeah. Oh, uh, I I didn't know your work at all, and I that was that was great. I'm going to try to go take in one of your performances. Uh, it was really wonderful to see it. And Lucinda, you were one of my students once. And uh, RV, a great friend from way back in your school days. So, yeah. uh, and I was just going to, I was just thinking that also people have other talents. Both you and, and Lucinda have beautiful voices and sing. So <laughs> I'm just going to throw that in. So, uh, Congratulations. Bravo. Hey. <laughs> All of you. Thanks. Thank you, George, so much for those kind words. Uh, we have another person. Uh, I believe Olson is your last name. I, I don't want to mispronounce your first name, but I believe you are allowed to talk, unmute yourself if you like. Marci Marcia, I believe. I'll uh, we'll see, maybe they don't have a question. Uh, while we are waiting for whoever would like to share, we have some people that have mentioned you all in the comments. Uh, Daniela, is that you? Hello, I have an application to unmute. Yep. Is that correct? Yep. Right. Yeah, you're perfectly. <laughs> okay, thanks. Hey, it's so great because I learned a lot more about all of your work than I knew previous to this presentation. I, it's really exciting. And, and of course, Arvi, I wanted to say how exciting it is to me to see you get this award because I've really been a fan of your artwork and your personality for a long time. And so uh, anyway, it's really exciting and uh, thanks. And, you know, Lucinda, thank you for all your work. I, from background have watched and not really been actively involved with you, but all this uh, stuff, it's really exciting because the whole thing about community and that's one of the reasons why I was really motivated to be a part of PNCA and go back to school was for the art and the printmaking and, you know, graphics and painting and, also to not be alone and to have community and this alumni award and what's going on with the school currently is really um, giving me that feeling of not being alone. And I'm really excited about what you're doing and uh, congratulations, awesome work. Thank you for those kind words. Uh, we have a question in the chat for all of you. Um, the question is, how do you find your inspiration? So maybe you would want to take it in turns to talk about it, but. Um, I can start. Uh, it starts with the reading. Uh, a lot of it is based on, on um, my experiences, but I think if, I, 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 I think any artist worth their salt does the research before doing the work and that's, um, that's how I get started with uh, something. I'm attracted to something, I research it, and then attempt, attempt to do a painting around that, around that work. Thank you, Arby. Uh, Lucinda, you shake your head. Do you want to? Yes, I read too. I'm a, a passionate reader and uh, I have a big library in my own house. And every now and again, there'll be a book on that shelf that's been sitting there for years and I'll pick it up and take it down and think this book is speaking to me personally and uh, there are lots of things that I enjoy reading about and I, I did a project for um, 
Grand Coulee Dam for the Lake Roosevelt's K through 12 school uh, about four years ago, five years ago. And it's a long drive up there, you know, and you're there and we got there and, and we went to sleep in this little motel right on the back side of the dam. All of a sudden these two owls started to sing and we both looked at each other and said, that's it, that's it. I'm gonna do bird paintings for these kids. And the, you know, 80% of those kids are Native Americans. And one of them said, oh, why did you do these? And I said, well, looking at birds, you know, you see the air between you and where the bird is. You see the way the bird looks at you and they're all dinosaurs, don't forget that, you know? And then I put, I put text all the way around each one of the paintings. And one boy said, what does this text mean? And the text was, I had to discipline myself. No one else could do it for me. And I said to the boy, have you ever been told what to do by your uncle or your mother or your grandfather or a cop? Did you do it? No, but you learned somewhere along the line. And I said to them also, these paintings are gonna look different when you come back to school, when you've been someplace else. It's, it's an amazing place up there. It's a cubist landscape. It's completely cubist. And, and the great horn owls that live up there, they are grayer than our owls. Our owls are brown because they're in the woods. Those owls are gray. I did a lot of reading about all that. And, and furthermore, it's, it's just remarkable to think that that dam, that damn dam was built without a fish ladder. No fish ladder, right? And then the Chief Joe Dam down the way had no fish ladder. So you're thinking, what are they trying to do? Starve these people? Yeah, that's it. So I, I was very, very involved at the same time as thinking, it's not my job to make Native American imagery. But I felt like everybody looks at birds, everybody. So anyway, I don't know how I got off on that subject, <laughs> but reading, reading. Arby said, <laughs> reading is what it is, you know, it really is. The, the book I just was talking about that I hadn't read that sat on my shelf, it's called Peter Skane Odgen. He was a, a Scotsman who went across the top of, above, above uh, in Canada and, and he married, Consecutively, he married two Indian women. The first one disappeared, completely disappeared. Nobody could find her. And the two little children went to her parents. The second one was a statuesque Salish woman who he married much later in life. And she found these little kids and she took them in. And this was in Spokane. And I was very touched by this story. I just felt like these people rose up in this book, I didn't even expect it. And when he decided he wanted to marry this statuesque older woman, they both have been married before. He said to uh, the tribal leader, what'll I do? And he said, it'll be 40 horses. So he brought 40 horses one at a time into the village. And at the end, she arrived on her own horse with her bridal outfit. What a beautiful story, man. It just made me weep, <laughs> weep. Well, thank you so much for that, Lucinda. Reading for you and RV is definitely an impact into your process and those stories that you hear and you share within your art. Is that the same for you, Ellen? Or do you have another way of getting inspiration? Well, well yes. I, I would say that my, the pride of my teaching all through the years was the involvement with my students were uh, veterans of uh, Vietnam, especially, and um, so many of them were all way off track, and it was such joy to see them get on a good track, and uh, the schooling and my education helped that. I was proud of that, <laughs> especially with my work in uh, places like uh, uh, Kaiser Aluminum and uh, don't be afraid of them, Find, you know, work with them, show them they can do something with students. And uh, then of course on the hand for what was the biggest challenge of all, but we, we did it, we, we worked with the devil at times, but <laughs> we actually did get job experience and my students were given uh, that on their resume. I was proud of that. That's a huge accomplishment. 
you should be proud. And sometimes you do have to work with the devil to get your, well, your yeah, message yeah. out there. <laughs> get your message out there. Well, that's the times you felt. <laughs> but uh, it, it, when it worked out for the better, then you really did feel good. <laughs> You felt your your teaching was really of value someplace. Definitely. We, we definitely appreciate all of you who have served in an educational role uh, over the years and helped foster inspiration in young people. And you have all done it in some way. Uh, Anthony, you didn't get to answer the question about your inspiration. Uh, would you like to? Sure. Well, you know, like Ellen, I too work with the devil. And um, uh, yeah, I'm also a fierce reader. Uh, and, and I think for me, you know, my inspiration really comes from uh, awfulness. Like I, I, look at, I look towards things that I find ill that I would like to see shift. Um, and, that, and typically my, my process is in response to things, um, usually putting them on myself and, and, and mocking it publicly and also negotiating my own place within these systems. Um, but really the real guide for inspiration for me is what is the thing that hits me in the shower and makes me giggle hysterically to myself. If I care about it enough to giggle about it hysterically when it hits me in the shower, then that means that I've got to share it with people. Um, and sometimes it works. So there's that. Uh, we have another question for each one of you is how do you celebrate an award like this? Do you go out to a fancy dinner, head off to Disneyland? What, what is something that you're gonna make to commemorate this for yourself? And anybody can start on this one. Champagne. <laughs> uh, Ellen, were, were you saying something? I think you might um, be on mute. How would you celebrate? Oh, I just say the main thing is to get back to a working routine. That's the most difficult of all. <laughs> and I really want, I want to say that I deeply appreciate the award that is a, a, an award of a lifetime. And I would like to also thank my gallery, uh, Ampersand, who has done so much to uh, keep me up and going. Thank you. It's sitting here right now helping me get through this because I'm so deaf. <laughs> well, that is great to have a gallery that supports you in all aspects of your practice. Yes. Yes, that's where I've been very fortunate. Uh, it's been unusually fortunate. Uh, well, thank you so much. Uh, Lucinda and Arvi, how are you going to celebrate and mark this occasion within your practice? Cindy, do you want to go first, or? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I uh, I hope to do a better painting. <laughs> as simple as that. I just want to make another painting that's better. And you know, trying to figure out what's a better painting is really what it's all about. And at some point, it's you that decides you you got to push yourself this way or this way. You know, you feel like you're learning all the time. And I have to just say to George Johansson, he was my first painting teacher. And he's the one who said, look at the phobes, who obviously like color. Wasn't that smart of him? He's a smart guy. And I think, I think that, uh, I think Michelangelo, the agony and the ecstasy. There's agony and there's ecstasy. And um, who knows which comes first, <laughs> but uh, finishing a piece is, it's ecstasy, but it's also kind of a letdown. It's that depression. And, and this goes with the show too. You, you work and you work and you work and some, and you've done, you think the best that you could do and you present it to the public, it goes well, but then there's this depression that I've talked to most artists that they feel and they have to regroup to go on, to keep going on to, to the next show. And, and that, that, that agony that you experience, that sleepless nights, sleepless all the time, you can't get, once you start working, you can't get away from it. It's there until it says, okay, I'm done with you, move on. 
And um, that's the exciting part of, of, of being an artist for me. I just got, thank you for that, everyone. I just got an update that if you're at home and you're watching this as a guest, you can now write your comments to each one of our panelists instead of everybody. So if you have any direct messages that you wanna send them. Uh, well, that is happening. We have another question. And that question is, what is the best advice that you've gotten that you've taken and applied to your own practice? You know, mine was from a fellow student and uh, we, were, we were getting ready to do our thesis at, at uh, the Portland uh, Pacific Northwest College of Art. And uh, we're, we're sharing, kind of sharing a studio. We're sharing a studio space. And this artist said to me, RV, paint like your life depends on it. And she was right. She was right. It's, it's, it becomes almost a life and death situation. You have to get this. You have to, you have to do this. And uh, leaving it incomplete is, is not an option. Some great advice. Uh, Lucinda, Mary Ellen, Anthony, what's some advice that you got that you applied to your practice? I'm thinking about my husband at home and I need to go home and take care of him. Yeah. Well, well, then we I should wrap this up. Goodbye. I have to say okay. goodbye because I really do need to go home. But I, I loved everybody. I love what you said. It was great. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so Lucinda. much for being with us, Lucinda. Sorry, Arby. Oh, okay. I think you can say, oh, I think she disappeared. Uh, well, Anthony, do you have any advice? Yeah, I, I think, you know, something I kind of alluded to it in my video, the video that played earlier, but I think um, it, it was something that came up at PNCA when I was like doing drag and then my instructors were like, hey, so what are you, what, why are you always late to class? But what the kind of advice that really came out of that was like, why are you editing yourself? Why are you why are you trying to prevent from sharing this thing that you really love with other people? And and it was it was instructors and professors like Linda Cleaver and and David Eckerd um, and MK Guth that that really kind of pushed this out of me where it was like, if this is the thing you love, do it. And and I think that's always been my advice is follow follow and, and go for the thing that you really are the most passionate about. It, it, even if it seems niche, if it seems weird or scary or it, it, it scares you, if you really are passionate about it, then go for it. Because I think that's the only way to get people interested is if they see the passion coming through that you have for it, then they're going to feel it too. Um, if you don't have passion for it, then who cares? So yeah, I think Follow, follow your fear and follow what you love. Thank you. Uh, Mary Ellen, is there any advice for you that you stuck with your practice? Any advice? Oh, do you want me to speak now? Or did, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yes, well, I would like to say that be open to new things, uh, especially things that hit me with the... Uh, Re responsive eye exhibit that toured the United States, the things that were coming out of Europe in graphic design and how that was uh, affecting uh, or not affecting the Pacific Northwest. That was really exciting to see the new way of seeing art and graphic design uh, that was not from our perspective, but from another culture from other cultures, especially in Europe. So we have one last question before we have to wrap things up. Uh, but the question is, is it true that art controls your process rather than you controlling your art? How do you feel about that? You sort of just, yeah, go for it. How does, does art control your process or do you control the process as an artist? Well, that's, you go a halfway path, way down the middle, hoping that you don't get uh, <laughs> annihilated trying to figure out something that's new, but it can annihilate you. There's no work if you're doing something no one understands, but that's a point you just have to figure out on your own. 
and when you have a good gallery that sees what you're trying to do, that's uh, very important. Awesome, uh, RV or uh, Anthony? I can, I can, I, I can agree with that. Uh, it's, 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 it's elusive. It's, it's, it's ambiguous. You, you start something, but you're not really in control. You think you're in control, but you're not really in control. Where did that come from? I know sometimes I'm painting and things appear that that I had no idea that they were going to appear. So I think there's, I, I think there's something else going on that perhaps I don't understand. It's, it's coming from somewhere else. Um, and and it's, it's invigorating when it happens, but then you start thinking, okay, that was pretty radical. Do I censor myself? And so it, there, there's all of these things that, that go into the work that you have to consider, but I think it's a mistake if you're not honest with yourself and do what the painting tells you to do. Anthony, how about for yourself? I absolutely agree with that sentiment. You know, sometimes it's it's really about relinquishing control and letting yourself breathe as you as you go through this unknown with the work. Um, I, I think of like with painting or with makeup, just breathe and blend, breathe and blend, and just you will get there. Um, in my case, I, I try to relinquish control now uh, to to the process, but. I'm very aware that my other half, Carla Rossi, is 100% in control. So there's that. Well, since we are about to wrap it up, I would like to give you each the floor to say any last words uh, before we close this evening. So if any of you have anything that you'd like to say, um, this is, would be a great time. I love it. <laughs> This is it, Anthony. <laughs> Anthony's bringing in the young folks. Here we go, buddy. <laughs> this it. is it. <laughs> Absolutely, RV. And I am, I can't tell you how honored I am to get to hold this alongside you all. Uh, this, this is, that's the greatest honor is to be included with you, you three. So thank you. Last how about you? I, uh, to do a uh, talk. To, all right. Uh, I would just like to sh shine this spotlight uh, uh, back on uh, the students that, that will be coming along. This is what it's all about. You, you don't realize it until you get it. And then you're really overwhelmed. It's beautiful. And uh, you're all, uh, you see something like this, it makes all that struggle worthwhile. Thank you. Awesome. Anthony. Well, thank you, each one of you. We are not going to be done celebrating you. Uh, anybody in our audience today sees these people on the street, um, give them safe recognition, give them a clap, a bow, a, a, an air hug, a high five, an elbow, whatever it is, send them a box of wine, um, whatever <laughs> that is that you want to celebrate these wonderful people, please do that. Um, and just know that you are wonderful examples of our PNCA community, and we are honored to have you lead and shine the light on your practices and other people's practices as you go out and forward and make and create. And we can't wait to see what you do in the future and how you um, grow your practice even more than it already is. So thank you all so much for being amazing people, and we're honored to have you here with us tonight. And I would like to thank the award committee. Thank you so much. <laughs> say, I was carrying home a raw canvas from uh, the art supply store and I crossed the street where they were doing road construction and the, everyone rushed out to tell me that they painted at home. Oh, did I like painting? And it was the most wonderful experience. They wanted to help me carry the canvas to the bus. 
And uh, I took the bus on Sunday because there were fewer people, but they still helped me carry the canvas and people wanted to communicate with me. Great. That's a real icebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is seeing a canvas on a bus. I would definitely ask questions of you. Yeah. And, well, and thank you. Oh, sorry, Arby. Also, thank you so much, Troy. Oh, no. You've you okay. an incredible job. No, um, thank you so much, too, for this. I think it's been a wonderful thing for all of us. <laughs> During this global pandemic, I can't think of a better way to bring us all together in a digital space, and hopefully we can come back together in person and celebrate you all in person once things get a little bit more underhand and um, more thoughtful of people in our community. Anyways, um, so thank you so much for our recipients, Anthony Hudson, Ellen McFadden, Lucinda Parker and R.V. Smith for being here and accepting this award that we could honor you in some way, even though it's not in person. And like I said, when we do get to see you in person, we will definitely honor you there. I would also like to thank President Steve Thorson from Willamette University and Interim President David Ellis for joining us this evening. And we also need to say thank you for Kendrick uh, er, uh, Kai, or Kai, uh, Daniela Rapaz, uh, Matt Bowers, Taylor Robertson, Chris or Kim, Anna Hutter, uh, Lauren Creaney, and the Alumni Recognition Committee, Linda Hutchinson, as well as Miles Halsworn, Hals Horse, sorry, the Russo Lee Gallery, uh, Katrina Wolsey, uh, the Mountain Monkey Company for the beautiful awards, and all of you who found time to come and celebrate these artists with us. Um, David, do you have anything else to say or? Nope. Okay. Then our evening has come to a close. And like my sixth grade student, when I was writing this uh, speech and I was asking the students for jokes tonight, um, this is the one that got the most giggles in the classroom. And it said, what did the artist draw before they went to bed? The curtains. So the curtains have come down. Uh, thank you all for being part of this great evening. You have been a wonderful audience. I hope you have a safe trip home. Remember to tip your wait staff. Please be kind to one another and go out there and continue making this world a more just, equitable, and sustainable place for us all to live, play, and maybe work. Thank you all and great night. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate you all and thank you for our award winners. And thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you to Faith. <laughs> and that concludes our evening. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. And definitely say hello and welcome our award winners when you see them in person. Looking forward. Looking forward.